Hi guys, I'm Sasha. Thanks for joining me. Today I am doing a relief carving on this aspen wood. It was a, it was just firewood. And uh, so I cut it with the uh, chop saw um, and then I hollowed out the inside. I know it's not very pretty. See, I don't have a lathe. So I just used a drill and then my Dremel uh, to do the rest. And that was pretty much as far as I could reach with my uh, flex shaft attachment. So I hollowed that out so I can use it as a candle holder. Um, and then I did this kind of woven pattern here. And then, <clears throat> and if you're gonna do a, a candle holder, you want to have some kind of thing around the candle because obviously, wood is flammable. So I put this in and I have the glass container. So stick around and I'll show you what bits I used and how I got this pattern. I've drawn my pattern here with permanent marker, including the over and under lines for the woven look of the pattern. And I'm using a pretty small round carving bit for this initial part. And I'm just putting in the basics of the pattern here. I'm not gonna go too deep or too detailed. I have it on a speed of 30, and I'm hardly putting any pressure on this wood at all because this aspen is so soft, just barely touching it. I finished doing the basic pattern outline here and now I've switched to a smaller bit. You can see here the difference between what I have on there now and what I used for the first phase. So that second one is really small. I'm gonna use this to add a little more depth and also more definition uh, to the walls of the carving. And you can see there I have a rice pillow uh, holding what I'm carving, it helps keep it from rolling over on me and then I put a pillow under my right hand to just kind of support my hand so it doesn't get as sore while I'm carving. I switched to a diamond point bit here, which is what you would use for glass etching. But here I'm gonna use it in these really small areas as a sander smoother. Um, and I like this one because it's round, so it's not gonna put any uh, marks where I don't want marks. But this helps smooth out the side walls and all the negative space of the carving.
I've switched to a sharpening stone. This is typically to sharpen chainsaws and things like that. Uh, but I really like it for smoothing. And here I'm using it just to round out those edges a little bit. Um, I have it on a pretty low speed, like 15, sometimes 20, but I'm barely putting any pressure because of the softness of the wood. And I did have to lower the speed because it was just taking it down too fast. But these sharpening stones work great for smoothing or rounding edges. Once I got the edges rounded, then I go ahead and sand it by hand. And I did end up having to uh, work with much smaller pieces of sandpaper and folding them even smaller than that. Uh, but I go along and I make sure that all the rounded edges are evenly rounded or as much as I can get them. Um, and just a nice smooth finish overall. Uh, this part can be pretty tedious, but um, definitely makes a difference with the uh, finished product. So this is what it looks like when I'm finished sanding. Um, it's gotten to the point where I'm pretty happy with it, but I do want to add a little bit more contrast uh, between the negative and the positive spaces. So I decided to put a dark stain um, on the negative spaces. Obviously I'm using a very small brush uh, to do this and applying it very carefully. I've speeded it up here on the video. Uh, but it did take a while and then um, I did have a few spots that I had to hit with sandpaper because I had overshot the stain just a little bit, a few mistakes, uh, but uh, I can fix that with a little bit of sandpaper, so no big deal. Here it is once the stain is dry and I'm applying a tongue oil finish. I didn't really want to do a urethane coat on this, so I'm just buffing in the oil completely over all of the wood and the inside also. And I was pretty happy with how that turned out. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe.